tremendous looking trophy. What I should have done is have a second one ready. Oh. <laughs> well, you could do if you want. Oh, just you, want a, a, you want to run? Just a little drinks break. No. I'll, oh, yeah, I better do it. You better eat. Can't be fine. too sure. <laughs> We're leaving this in the podcast. Just all of it. Just. Well, all this is yeah, the start. This is, no, this, this is, is the terrible. Start. This is no, this, this is the start. Deal. No, this is not the start. Yes, yeah, the start. I just start the show as soon as it gets back. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceania. with your host Dylan Blight. Today, joining me as always, Kieran March. You're a shit bloke. W- excuse me. You're a shit bloke. Why? For what? Just carry on with your show, and I'll explain in a second. All right, fair enough. And also joining me, special guest from... Uh, this is the thing that's confused me. Uh, do I say player? Do you say player2 or do you say player2.net? Uh, well, it'll be player2.net.au, but just go player2. That works. So you see, it, it's confusing because if you're like, oh, from player2, they're like, yeah. .net.com. .au. Paul James. How are we all? Um, we're, we're doing great. We, for, we're great, except for this shoddy hostmanship here. I'm sorry, Paul. We've I was, tried I was to about to call of, him out because I figured that's where you were going. We've 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 tried to have a change of hosts here, and this one keeps coming back. Dylan, Paul has just sat down and put his headphones in, and you've instantly started the bloody podcast. Bloke didn't even get a chance to fill up his drink. He didn't get a chance to breathe and say good day. It was just go, and that's that's just an outrage, Dylan. To be honest with you. To be fair, I said let's start the show, and he was like, "Nah, nah, I gotta wait and go Dylan, get a drink." No, this is a guest in our household. Virtual household. It's not my household. Virtual I'm in a completely household. different fucking island. Like I'm well escaped from you. You're closer to him. Well, yeah, but what would Bevan think? I don't know. I've locked him away. You? Did you watch the Monday RTS I, video? I fucking did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Little fucker. <sighs> uh, uh, well, thanks for joining us today, Paul, on the uh, the PlayStation podcast that we do at the Explosion Network. It's great to have you. For people who don't know who you are, explain yourself and where you're from. So I guess I hail mo- uh, first and foremost from kind of what we'd call traditional games, media sort of stuff. A lot of my content is written. Um, Player2.net.au has been going for a good three or four years now. Um, and been doing fairly well for uh, for what it is, but we're starting to brand. I've really tried to lead a bit of a change and bring some video content in. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of let's plays. I've got a, a bit of my own original content on the YouTube channel. That's youtubecom slash player 2 netau No dots. Um, just to confuse things even further, right? Uh, but yeah, look, uh, things are going really well. Um, and well, I'm glad I get to join you guys in this episode. I'm a big PlayStation guy first and foremost, even though uh, our dialogue today kind of suggested maybe otherwise. Um, but no, nah, PlayStation's my thing, so I'm real keen. There's no way I don't have someone onto this show and scour their PSM profile <laughs> for <laughs> anything to have on them. My my, you know? dir- my like dirtiest anything. Dirtiest achievements, or lack of them. Dirty, yeah, you've got to find something. Like, if you had randomly had Hannah Montana in there... I wouldn't have used it against you. I would have brought you to my side to use against Kieran. So I keep, I, I keep that on my spare backup profile so that no one publicly has to see it. And I can I did. sit back and bask in its glory. Well, just one account. That's all you've got. Just one, one yeah, it's, it's, it's actually Hannah called Hannah the It's called Hannah the Platt. <laughs> it's not a bad idea for an account, actually. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did notice something else. I would I'll give you a little tip because, uh, of course, this this podcast was brought up from basically just wanting to talk about trophies most mostly, and we we do do that as of should. course every show. Yeah, but to help your profile percentage, you can delete zero percents. Yeah, I've got to go through and kind of clean that up. There are a few zero percenters. You in do, there, and I've deleted a few was- in the journey, but there's a few that I've missed. So does or that actually, does heading. that actually like bring my percentage down as well? Yeah, zero percent like really affect your percentage. No, no, but Paul, like your overall. Paul, holy crap! Paul, no, no, stand up, stand up as a revolutionary. Keep those zero percenters. Stand up to the man, Dylan Blight. No, no, I'm absolutely going to delete. Or, I love myself fuck. a high trophy level. I need to clean that profile. Up. I mean, when I saw Dylan the first time, to- I nearly cried with the number. Uh, with what are you trophy level? What now? Oh, I don't know, 30 something, 100 something plats, 120 something plats. No, you're 131 yeah, no. plats, at least. No, I'm talking about your level. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. never going to chase down that Fuck number of plats. I know. 
you, you got 30 more, something level. You got more platinums in the last two months than I have full stop. So, um, no, you've got like 20 something. He did like, I didn't get 20 in the last they're, one. They're no, Telltale you got, you games did. and three Sound Shapes ones. Like, it's, uh, Sound Shapes is legit. Sound Shapes Ooh. is legit, but I, I did it once. Look, not Man. to not to put Paul in his place, but you did ten in a week, Dylan. In a week, yeah. And so you're going to chase me, Kieran. You're going to chase me down this year alone with your whole. What 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 you said again for yourself? I, I'm doing twenty five this year. I'm, I'm yeah. five in. Yeah. There you go. You, better- you should change it to twenty seven just to fuck Paul up. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, I no, only have no, five. No, that won't be so the case. Getting, then. I've got third. I'll get. I'll have thirty by the end of the year. All right, so I'll get platinums. I'll get one back because there'll be uh, Batman Telltale finish that. Um, can I get that on PS3 still? Because if I have to, I'll get it on there just to keep ahead of you. <laughs> you can. So you can double up if you enjoy the game so much. You can do. Um, go they didn't put it on. Probably, they didn't put on Vita. That was a. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. i like even if I get to thirty. If I get to thirty plats by like June, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Just going to keep motor through. Dylan, I'm coming for you. You never no, used I'm to not. care. That's t- I never used to care. I was Mate. like, yeah. And then and then Dylan was like, no, like I cared at one point when I got my original five and then I stopped caring because I was like, I just like to play games normally. And then Dylan did this play that was doing the challenge. So I was like, you know what? I'll do it too. And I'll outshine all of the other PlayStation fanboys in our network who are not going to do the challenge. Look, I don't know, Dylan, how you get the number of plats that you get anyway. I mean... There's new games coming out every week. You're onto something new every week. How are you knocking these things over? I don't know. I haven't, no, I haven't knocked one over in a couple of weeks. Do, do you, you work? Just, you just need to set time. Yeah. <laughs> I Somehow. <laughs> I work. When I'm not, but chas- I, I when I'm also not chasing plats. I also don't have a significant other or family. <laughs> well, I got Which one allows of, me. I've got one of those two, but... Yeah. That, that allows you a, 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 a lot of time. Is what I find. But also, Dylan's very... Dylan's a chess master. Like, Jill, Dylan doesn't just, you know, go play a game and midway through the game, he's like, oh, I'm going to plat this. He has, like, a strategic battle plan for every game he plays. Like, it's just going to be, right, I'm getting this plat, and then I'm moving on to this plat, and he goes through. And then he'll have a break. He'll have a bit of a break, which he's in it at the minute. And then randomly in, like... A month's time, maybe, he'll be like, oh, I got another 15 Platinums, by the way. And I'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> when did this even happen? <laughs> we broke your PlayStation. Oh, please, no. <laughs> the, 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 the silence, like, it was, there was hearts breaking there. <laughs> oh, my God, Paul, you're My heart genius. did break a little bit. You're a genius. Um, <laughs> since, you, since you brought it up in your, your little introduction thing, I, what, I will ask now, since I thought it would be a good point, you 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 originally wanted to get into games media, traditional games media, air quotations happening. Want to explain what traditional games media means to you personally compared to uh, the way things oh. are changing and what we're doing? I mean, Will's all at, Will's at PAX point. last year, of course. We're just running around with video camera doing whatever the hell we want. With not with we didn't even have media passes. Like, do you think? Yeah, I waved it in your face. Traditional game. Yeah. <laughs> do you think uh, <laughs> do you Dylan think traditional games media is as dead as a lot of people kind of believe? Um, it's not dead, and I guess like even depending on who you talk to, traditional games media can kind of look different from person to person. If you're you know maybe forty plus, then traditional games media to you is magazines, hyper PC, powerplay, all those sorts, uh, edge, all those sorts of things. Which there's a few of those that are still kicking, but the majority have died. Um, I guess for us in our kind of age bracket, we almost think of ga- uh, traditional games media as IGN and GameSpot and those sorts of guys um, who I guess more and more are kind of having to turn to what I guess is the norm these days where we see Twitch, we see YouTube, all those sorts of things. But um, traditional to me is written word, be that um, on a website or in a magazine. Um, though I can't say that I've contributed anything more than a co- uh, to the comments section of a hyper magazine about 15 years ago. <laughs> but I've been in, um, I've been in print, so I guess it counts. Yeah, it's. I mean, I still pick up the. I still pick up Game Informer, not monthly, but uh, enough that when I do buy an issue of Game Informer, it's it's kind of nice to have the. I lay back on my bed and I'm like, oh, I'm holding a a physical magazine in my hands. And I'm gonna <laughs> how I'm gonna read some articles and stuff. Yeah, like how weird is this? Because <laughs> you just get used to every morning just like opening up. IGN or whatever, you know, just open up Twitter. It's like, here's this article, here's this review, here's this 
thing, blah, 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 blah. But then that's like reading IGN is such a 10 percentage of my games media intake. I feel like that's, and that's mostly just for the personalities I like there and stuff like that. And then the majority of the personalities that we like, be it Greg Miller and whoever else that left to form kind of funny and all that stuff, they're just going off doing what they want anyway. Yeah, and so, they, they and kind of the curate the news most for you anyway. So, like with what you see yeah. in Games Daily, it's all kind of handpicked by them. And, I mean, we, because you know, I'm part of that same community, like we, we kind of gravitate to them because they had similar interests and those sorts of things. So, the news kind of gets, you, you kind of hear that news in about an hour per day, give or take. Um, and then you, you go why on with your day. You th- why did you think you gravitated? Because, to me, the reason I feel like I gravitated to them in the first place was because they weren't... Well, especially Greg didn't sound like traditional games media. He was loud. He just said whatever he thought. And it wasn't just on video or in podcasts when I heard him. It was also his written stuff was completely different. To yeah, you could, you could hear that tone. You could hear his tone. And he, he wrote his reviews like he was a, a normal person, whereas I felt like the most of the writers were still writing the very... You know, the way you're brought up in col- university or whatever, they went for their journalism degrees. They've, they've, they're very much writing in a p- specific way that they were taught, whereas Greg's just writing, hey, I'm talking to you as a person. And I feel like that's why a lot of us gravitated towards that years ago. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's the same the same for me. And I mean, that's how I kind of gravitated to Colin and Greg on Beyond in the first place. And the great thing about that was that there was that contrast between those two um, Colin being very traditional in the way he did things and then Greg very flamboyant and loud and boisterous and but I mean if you listen you know like Greg talks about how some of his writing in those early days was also fairly shit um, yeah you <laughs> uh, and he's not wrong um, but as he kind of grew and developed he was still able to inject that personality you're talking about but have it sound more authoritative um, and I don't know. He's he's kind of nailed. He kind of nailed the sweet spot, really, between what two different sorts of audiences are looking for. Yeah. So, do you feel like uh, with everything you you're trying to do at Player Two now that your the way you're you're going about it has changed since you uh, wanted to get into this field, whatever you want to call this field? Um, I feel like I'm kind of straddling two two kind of spheres. So, like my written stuff is for the most part, and I'd say 99 percent of it, uh, unless it's kind of a feature article where we're really consciously deliberately fooling around um majority of my stuff is still that very i guess to put it in the two spheres the very colon sort of lens where it's very serious and and that sort of stuff and it's yep. it's in, it's in video audio and video where i can really kind of mess around and have a bit of fun with it um which is why they, these sorts of things whether it's me on my own shows or being a guest on others like we are today that's where i get to have a lot of the fun with it yeah I find it's, it really I, interesting as well, personally. Sorry, Dylan, you can shut the fuck up for a sec. Um, <laughs> I find it super interesting um, that that um, previous traditional media ways, how that's now blending into um, the newer ways. Like with Colin doing Colin Last Stand, even though I don't agree with his content or I'm not a fan of the actual content itself, his very traditional way of speaking and in, in that essay format that he does in that and say the OK Beast Boys do. That's a really interesting change as well, I find. Like, it's very um, non-personal and analytical. How are you finding that kind of transformation that's only recently happened in the last couple of years, in my opinion? Oh, no, I, I think that's great. Like, to be able to address multiple different audiences and give them content in different ways, I think that's... I and mean, we know, we're all different. We all like different things. We all... You know, whether it's... I mean, I guess I'm a teacher, so I'm not going to dive too too deep into this, but, we, you know, we... Some people prefer things very visually and lots of emotion and kind of exaggerated movements, those sorts of things. Others like sitting back and listening and, you know, everyone's kind of got their different... It's a horses for courses sort of thing. So you're addressing those different audiences and there'll be crossover. I mean, like I said, I love the kind of funny stuff, even without Colin, and I love what Colin's doing. I'm not too deep into the uh, the politics side of of things, but uh, especially given most of it's framed around what goes on in the US and I largely couldn't care less less. um but uh in terms of the way he speaks about gaming i've always personally had a lot in common with the way he speaks and i really i've learned a lot from the way he speaks or writes so it's been great very good okay dylan carry on hosting (laughs) well thanks karen you're welcome great love you bud thank you all right uh let's jump into our first topic the game 
we talked, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, it was even the last two weeks, we was talking a little bit about game funding and problems within the Australian market and the Australian politics, or however you want to put it, not taking the, oh, the game scene the, seriously. The 17k that we got for the games industry to send a few blokes away on a plane. Yes, that. Uh, but we had some good news this week. We actually had some good news this week. So if you live, if you're in South Australia, <laughs> uh, you take you take what you can. I'd like to say all of Australia. Here's some great news for the indie developers in all of Australia, but South Australia. So they're getting two million dollars in funding for the for games industries with grants being given up to fifty thousand dollars to put towards different products and stuff like that. They're also putting four hundred fifty thousand dollars into a Games Plus, which is a co-working environment used to. Uh, workshop together with other indies and stuff like that. Great news. It's fantastic. Now I feel like a lot of people that I met and saw uh, at, at PAX are just going to have to move uh, different states, maybe. Because I, I know that in Victoria, it's okay, like funding-wise. Tasmania actually gets decent funding here. I know that because they do a hell of a lot of workshops and stuff like that. There's They do a, one of those 24-hour, 48 like things like half an hour from me. The game, um, the game and jams. Now in South Australia, game jams. Yeah, and like Jason Ims is there, and all he's that a gun. stuff shows up there. Yeah, he's always there and stuff. So Tasmania, Victoria area, I think, is still okay. And now South Australia. If you're anywhere else in Australia and you want to be a, a game dev, I, I believe, and I'm, I'm speaking out my ass, but I believe you're fucked. We're well, not <laughs> fucked. But you're, 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 you should just move states because. Um, how do you feel about the Australian? indie scene itself poll having seen a lot of the the indie games of course at pax and stuff like that and just general following along with twitter I, i've i've made a an effort more as we've got in after starting the explosion network to try and keep up with more with australian devs because i feel like it's my got to do my due diligence and a lot of them that's i just change words kieran don't give me that face i do what i want, I do what I want. What it's my show i, I, I thought you said I thought that was great. Right. dillians i think you said dillians yeah Dillin- well, my name's Dillin. dillians yeah dillians thank you he got it paul got it new host you're fucking fired kieran get out of here <laughs> i knew bringing paul on was in an effort to replace me i goddamn knew it I've been looking for a new host for this shit show mm, for a long time a now, and <laughs> I've <shit> found it. <laughs> um, I'll, ch- I'll chase down platinums if I have to. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the only you can. It's, it's you very, don't need very to. You can be an Xbox fanboy boy to be his co-host. Yeah, Nobody else wants to be it. How do you feel about the Australian indie scene? Um, and do you feel like the Australian scene is kind of? shitty compared to American stuff like that. Because a lot of stuff in Australia, you can be like, we've got it better than America and other places. Australian indie game scene, they don't take it serious here. In terms of what we're producing, per capita, I guess I say, and I, I think it happens well, out, like not just in the games media, but per capita, we're, we're really delivering. I, I thought, thought about last year, I actually penned a piece for the website last year or typed a piece because I'm not an idiot. Um uh, I jotted, uh, put a piece together last year where I was kind of looking at the, the indies that came out of Australia last year and the things that kind of struck my mind were the likes of Hollow Knight and um, Golf Story and there was, there was oh, I think I came up with a list of about a dozen Two plus. of the biggest indie games of the year. Yeah, um, and uh, even thinking about the, the Game Awards and the nominees for the uh, best debut title, three of the five are Aussie games. Now, they all they mm-hmm. end up lo- losing to Cuphead. But... Um, and like there was, there's there's awesome product coming out of Australia, and a lot of it at the moment is largely Hollow Knight was an exception when it came to that. But there, uh, a lot of it's coming out of Melbourne and specifically the arcade there. Um, Melbourne's done a really good job early days to kind of give uh, indie developers a a hub that they can kind of work in. I know a few. I mean, like I'm a teacher, former former students of mine who are planning on getting into it, and they've they've already kind of. Uh, created some links with people at the arcade and are looking to move in there in the next year or so. Um, but what South Australia is doing is fantastic. Uh, to be able, like when the the federal government isn't going to be there to support, there's a state that is, and not in an ins- insignificant way either. So um, I think it's awesome. And the Hollow Knight guys, the Team Cherry guys, are based in South Australia. Um, they've kind of been fairly reclu- uh, reclusive in the past, but I don't know maybe maybe the government needs to kind of tap them on the shoulder and say, look, we need you guys to be leaders and help build this up. And like, here's the funding. Obviously you're not going to get a massive portion of it. You've put your game out. You're already making your money, but um, yeah, 
like they could really be leaders and help foster a community there and all of a sudden it's not just Melbourne that's a viable option it's South Australia and then that can kind of spread from there I mean even though there's not that much going on funding wise for New South Wales as far as the Australian games industry is concerned it is still the go-to place all the PR teams are well sorry not all but 95 percent of them based out of Sydney the main big name games press they're all based out of Sydney um and you know you you got South Australia you get Victoria uh, Tasmania's going well Uh, not that anyone yeah whatever um (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, there was some backtracking going on we there We played a Tasmanian game <laughs> On our fucking Extra Life stream ha- And people still give me shit ha- <laughs> Halfway through that comment I've just gone, oh no um, <laughs> you, I saw you look up as well And I was like, oh no Back You're away, a big Paul. Jason Imms fan, away. aren't you? Uh, so I'm never hosting with you again uh, <laughs> You're not coming on fucking his, uh, Game hugs either <laughs> Oh shit, Jason um, <laughs> uh, so, but you add those three places, and then if you can get really get uh, New South Wales on board, and from there it just starts to take off. The if the state governments can support where the federal government isn't, then things are still viable, and maybe they finally wake up and get on board somewhere in, somewhere down the track. Yeah, this is one of those things where I read the news, and because I don't uh, understand our government to the level that this makes sense to me that I get really confused because it confuses me when I read that a state can like fund something like this, but then the overall, you know, the main government isn't like putting it out to everyone kind of thing. It's just like, we're just going to do this. This is a thing that we're kind of going to do. And I don't understand the barriers that they had to cross to get the grant because $2 million is, well, it's $2 million. It's, yeah. it's a decent amount of money. And w- when I read that, I'm like, how does that make it across from, ACT, you know, out the front doors there, across the lawn, all the way down to South Australia with an AOK of we'll grant $2 million, but we still don't really support the Australian games industry. But that's because it like, doesn't still come, being really shitty. It doesn't come from the ACT. It is South Australian money, more or less. Um, the, the local so it's just taxpayers, straight out of their pockets. Yeah, straight out yeah. of their pockets. So like how, um, I mean, I, I think about where I kind of am in Victoria and the things that I've kind of seen happen over the journey and like I, I think I'm a big Geelong footy club fan and they looked for a redevelopment of the stadium there and sure oh, there was, there was a, yeah, get over yourself you, you, who do you support again? Uh, no don't even worry about it Just keep there going. we go um, <laughs> <laughs> and like they sourced their funding there was a, por- a portion that came from the federal government which was the biggest of the lot because they have the most to give um but then the Victorian government chips in a share and then the club themselves and then key sponsors. So, like, you, you're pulling this, these funds from a whole bunch of different areas. So I guess in this particular case, maybe it was the South Australian government looking, at, looking on and going, well, we believe in this thing. Where the federal government's not prepared to chip in, we will. So here you go. That's, that's great. Which I, 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 think, didn't, I think's I, awesome. I think because of the amount mm. of money, I was just like, there's no way that's all just funded locally. That's that can't be two million dollars. That seems like a lot to me. Maybe it's not a lot. I, well, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what know. the population of South Australia is. It'd be a couple million, I guess. Um, but already that means it's you know a dollar per person really that's going that way. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much considering we all know how much we pay tax for different bits and pieces. Um, that's true. A dollar per person going towards the game scene is actually not a massive portion of what we pay in tax per year. And I'm no great expert on kind of finance and all that sort of stuff either. But it's. I don't imagine that's a particularly large chunk of what we're paying anyway, or what South Australians are paying. Yeah. I feel like in, in because you brought up football clubs, and of course, if you become a member, you're kind of just helping fund your, 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 your club and supporting them and stuff like that. It's a wonder that they each state haven't set up more of a similar scenario kind of to fund indie game scene. Like, you, you see all these esports stadiums and stuff we've been talking about starting up now and, and stuff like that. And they want to bring these up. People could buy into the esports stadiums. I don't know, set up local funding at like these video game bars and stuff like that to, to help fund indie de- developers, local indie developers and stuff like that. It could be a chip in jar thing that's happening that I, have, I haven't seen, but it seems like a, a go-to thing. I mean, it's... Like cra- crowdfunding is obviously a big thing. We we're patrons of different people. I, we'll all be patrons of kind of funny, for example. And there's there's others, and you know you got your kickstarters and those sort of things. So I guess like even if it is tip jar style, 
Um, yeah. Or, you know, what you, you go to Grilled, for example, and you see they've got the different containers that, you know, pop your thing in here and this is money going towards this cause or this cause or this cause. Those sort of initiatives, whilst, you know, gaming bars aren't super common, um, yeah, like something Becoming simple like common. that helps. And, you know, you could uh, orchestrate those sorts of things at PAXs and, and other maybe local yeah. conventions that are going on. I think that's that's a really cool next... If it's not already happening, that's a really cool next step to... Um, What's yeah. already going on? It's like uh, when I buy my plane tickets, you, you buy Jetstar and it's like that extra charge, you want to offset your whatever, you know, blow up the air. Like you can you can ship in a couple dollars to for the, the part that you're going to kill the air because you're in a plane. Like you're on a jet plane. It's damaging the ozone layer. Do you want to help pay money, something to offset the charge of helping destroy the earth. Do you want to help feel better about destroying the earth? And I'm like, yes, I would like to help feel better about Crazy. destroying the earth. And I, <laughs> I chip in the couple dollars Crazy. every single time I buy a, I buy a plane ticket. Crazy. I feel like they could just, it's like, here, do you want to buy your PAX? T-? No, I'm at PAX. I'm like, yes, I would like that Coke and fries. Would you like to chip in $2 for the, the local Melbourne games industry? Sure. Just charge it on my card. Like I guarantee they'll make thousands by the end of the, the, the thing. Yeah. I- Done. I think it'd be fantastic, and I mean, we all buy a lot of rubbish while we're over at PAX, so it, they'd make a lot of money off us. Yeah, yeah. Everyone that goes down to the whatever the the gaming bar is there, can I have a beer? Would you like to chip in? Yeah, <laughs> here's yeah. my here's my card. If you want to charge fifty, go I feel, for it. I feel like that's unethical to do that to drunkens, but you know, no, that's you're, how you're most of these things work. That's how gambling works, right? Yeah, uh, uh. yeah. Gambling helps the government though, so they don't even fucking care about it. ethical. Yeah, and they still won't pass the money uh, onto the games industry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, spot on. With that, let's move on to the second topic. Shadow of Colossus dropped. You've played it, Paul. Yes, I didn't find this. We room haven't that we're going to talk about. Okay, so I was reading the story today. Well, I was reading a story even though I was following along on Twitter because Brian from PS4 Trophies. I yes, mean, it's just PS4 trophies. Mm-hmm. I I'm a I was a patron for him for quite some time. I was I, I'm a big fan of of Brian. He's helped me find many a trophies and collectibles in my gaming in my gaming career. Can I call it a career, <laughs> Karen? Can I call um, it my gaming yes, a career? If it starts yes, you making can. you money, yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I mean, all right, but it could in the future start making me money. So I'm just future proofing. You're just future proofing yourself by calling it a career. Fair, fair, calling point, a career fair enough. So, so he was live streaming Shadow of the Colossus and there was this secret room or there's a big or there's a big door that was in the original game apparently. I never I've still have yet to play Shadow of the Colossus. Um at all. New version or old version. But this door was in the old version of the game and for ages it was one of those things like, Can you bring Aerith back to death by fucking going oh, down yeah. the Rake River? You know, like push one the, of these. Push big the truck things. and Pikachu will appear. Yeah, um, all that kind of uh, crap. Mew, it's sorry. Like, Mew. That thing. It's like these urban legends of gaming. So, But no one could ever get this door to open in the original game. In the new version, they added these coins that you could uh, find and collect. And once you found all of them, which Brian was the first person to do, you could find this door and get into the room. Now, what's inside the room? Big secret. Oh, there's a, you spend hours finding all these things. It's a big deal. What do you get? You, you, you get a fucking sword. That's a little bit powerful <laughs> and it's dark. That's what you get. Now, I read this. I go, what an absolute bullshit. I, I'm reading, I'm, I'm following along the story going, oh man, it's going to be like a teaser trailer for their next game. The alternative ending to the game. It's going to like clues about like e- Ico 2, Last Guardian Three, they just skip two, they make three. Fuck it, who cares? You know, something cool because this seems like a, I'm following this epic adventure, and then it's like I got a sword, guys. Um, I've already finished the fucking game, so I don't need this sword at all. And uh, I'll, I'll just guess I'll just uh, take a screenshot, uninstall the game, and move on with my life. Now, my question is, do you think these things are bullshit? Because I know other games do them. Where they they drag you along and they give you a weapon or something, even Zelda. It's like you can finish the game and then get the bike with the new DLC, and you can use the bike for fucking nothing because by the time you've got the bike, you've finished the game and you're done. It doesn't matter. How do we feel about this this shadow thing? What do you want to call it? Do you, you gotta take a second so you can you can learn how to speak again because it just I, like derailed I, itself like halfway through that. 
goddamn section. I'm sorry, Karen. listeners. I'm really Karen. sorry. It's getting worse. Karen. Look, Karen. you're like a horse. I need you to like put you out to fucking pasture. He's got Pasture? A <laughs> <laughs> Don't act like this is your first episode. What was the question? Uh, Shadow of Colossus, big, big Oh, no, I didn't. I was just wanted to get you to repeat it. Um, so what I was thinking, it reminds me of a game that did the opposite but did it better. Or did it really well. There was a... I don't know if you, you probably neither of you have probably ever heard of it, but there's a a web based game called Tibia, and it's like an RPG. Um, it's like RuneScape but two D pixel art. And there was this doorway that was is found. it RuneScape two like, D pixel art? No, RuneScape was three D. Really? It was well, three dimensional. So does ne- so was Neopets. Early days, it was two D only. Was it really? I did not know. You see, there you go. More That's you what know. I thought. But Continue it was two D pixel story. art in Tibia, and there was a door. And um, nobody had ever gone through this door, and the developers had built up this door, and the pro play, like the pl- top players, had found it. And apparently, he spent hours and hours and hours and endless. And only one player has ever gone through that door, and he has never told anybody what's on the other side. Which so I how, think is what. So awesome. how do we know if he went through the door in the first place? Because the devs confirmed it. Like everybody else was, so it's like a, it's like World of Warcraft. So everybody else was stood around him as he entered the door. He was the only person that was allowed into the door. And then when he came back out, he could, didn't tell anybody. This he is just, the plot of Ready Player One. He literally came out, logged off, and then and, people and then asked what, him never on played again. People were asking, I don't know, I don't know about the rest of it. But the people were asking on Reddit, and he's like, "No, I'm never telling anybody. I'm never going to tell anybody." So I don't know, I don't know if that story's ever evolved. I haven't heard about that in a couple of years, so I don't know if more people have been through or if it's been revealed. But that's the coolest shit ever. There's a secret that people that somebody has worked out, and it's just a mystery still. Or you know, games that are still to this day people are finding stupid secrets in that. Oh, ridiculous. There was one I heard about the other day. I can't remember what game it is now because this is super useful. But where they're still finding secrets in it and that blows my they mind. They were finding monsters in Bloodborne still. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Lan- Lance McDonald, re- Aussie, represent doing a great job when it comes to Bloodborne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's like, weird. That kind of thing, to have secrets in the game that are developed or... Um, it wasn't Eve, it's the other goddamn spacey game. Oh, Elite Dangerous. So Elite Dangerous has aliens in it, and people have been searching for aliens forever. And there's this whole heap of random stuff that's been happening in that game, where random players will have one-off encounters with aliens, and then they'll never be seen again. And they won't be seen for whatever. And that kind of extent, where... It's not a massive fuck you. Is awesome when pl- when um, developers are putting things in games that make players work for it and reward them. Fuck yeah! The amount of games though that do it Shadow of Colossus style is a massive fuck you and will. So you're on my side. At least I am. This, this I am is... on your side where it's like spent hundred fucking coins and honestly half of it, half of it's not the developer's fault. Half of, well no I'm gonna say sorry a small portion of it is not the developer's fault. It is. The community overhyping what's going to happen. The community overhyping. But then the other half, the developer should have seen that this was going to happen based on, you know, how many fan theories was about this door. But, no, it's a massive fuck you that there's... <laughs> it's, it's not a even... a door that's in the original game that you can't get into. There's no way it doesn't get hyped up. Yeah, that's true. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then... <laughs> Just to be a sword. I like it when games do it on purpose to be a fuck you. Like, you know, there's another... I'm so bad at remembering titles. I wish you'd preempted me on this one. God damn it, Dylan. Nah, some of them I do, some of them I don't. No, you do sometimes. <laughs> but I gave Paul a heads up, he's a special <laughs> guest. <laughs> Fuck it. you. God damn it. Where, you know, where it's an ironic one where... Oh, it's like the um, the South Park episode where they perfect a Guitar Hero song and it's like... You're a fucking nerd, and that's the best because that that's funny. That's ironic that you put in all this work. But when it's like they obviously are trying to reward you for doing something, but their reward does not meet the anticipation. Um, that's fucked. That's just not fun, and it's a massive slap in the face. So it was something that Blue Point added. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It would be. No, they fucking yeah. Blue it's Point. something they added. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? Uh, I've got no problem with it. 
Uh, and I only say that because to to Kieran's point about uh, hype, given that the, given the hundreds and hundreds of games, and let's be honest, they're mostly JRPGs. Um, but the hundreds and hundreds of games over the journey that have done this sort of thing, why do we keep getting hyped if we know that it's typically <laughs> going to be like? It, and I I get like the the hype culture, but seriously, how many times have we been smacked down? How many times do we have to be smacked down before we realise? It's not going to be something amazing, and then finally, it might actually be something amazing. Set the I bar. I can tell you, so it's, my- it's like a good E three. Set the bar low, and then you'll never be disappointed. Yeah, I, I agree about E three, but there have been several. Like my go to, my favorite secret hidden room thing from a video game ever that really excited me was in the original Arkham where there was that hidden room that someone found like a year after Arkham came out and it had the map for Arkham City in it. Yes. And yeah. I was like, fuck, that is cool. That has payoff. Someone just randomly found that like a year later and that had people being like, fuck, I wonder if the next game's going to be like a full city. Like, da, da, da. That's worth it. That was worth someone just nosing around that game for ages to figure that out. That's does, payoff. Does it bother you or make you feel old that that was actually about three or four years after Arkham Asylum came out? Was it really? Yeah. I knew it was a while, <laughs> was, but I couldn't remember a, how long. It was a long time. Yeah. And like, then they... And then City had well and truly come out. Cu- Origins was pretty close, and it was I think it was just before Origins that people actually found it. So that's a good three years. Yeah, but it's still cool. <laughs> it's oh, yeah, still it's awesome. like, that was there. Yeah, that was awesome. And they the they tried to kind of mimic the same kind of Easter egg thing with City, where they put the Harley's pregnant... Um, thing but it didn't turn out to be anything because then of course harley was never actually pregnant so that that just felt like they chucked that in as an idea they had that maybe she her and the joker would have a kid in the next game but then just got thrown out the window so that didn't pay off but that room with the map that's kind of what i'm looking for in these scenarios like if they'd had if you'd walked into this room in shadow of the colossus and in the background, it was just a giant, like, mural painted wall of, like, creatures that you didn't know. Just really confusing stuff. And for the next 10 years, people could have tried to go, well, it's their next game. And it's, like, about this, about this. That's fine by me. Like, just inspire some sort of co- conversation for a very long time. Just, like, here's a sword that doesn't really matter at all because it's just a thing. Like, this is your reward. That's shit. Yeah, I, I I could agree with what they what they could have done. Yeah, because we know that in the original game there was a bunch of colossi that kind of hit the cutting room floor and were never used. Mm-hmm. Maybe that would have been the opportunity to go in there and you know it's totally out of whack with the rest of the game. But let's be honest, not every most people won't collect the seventy odd coins or whatever it is. I I yeah. can't it's like even seventy nine. I think I can't even remember finding weird. one, and I bloody reviewed the thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> like. You know, it'd be a great opportunity for, to reward those people. Like, here's your chance to see some of those things that, like, you, we're not going to get a Shadow of the Colossus sequel. Um, no. But, like, here's your chance to see the things that could have been. And that that's pretty cool. Um, what yeah, do you feel in, about um, games? Like, in, like, it's... Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, like, even most recently, and it kind of paid off with the... Uh, in Mega Man 10, there was actually, like, in the, in the Legacy Collection 2, there was the concept art. And in the concept art... They just kind of slipped in there and no one realised. People thought it was a little bit confusing but didn't attribute it to what ultimately ended up being Mega Man yeah. 11. I like that, sort of stuff's, that. that sort of stuff's really cool. Um, and Bluepoint had the same opportunity because like the Mega Man Legacy Collection, it's a remake or a remaster. Um, they probably could have dropped some of those things in there. Now, sure, we're not going to get a Shadow sequel, but you know, it was an opportunity to drop some of that concept stuff in there. Even just like I don't know how you feel about me- the it bugged me so much about Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain, how a good portion of the game was hidden. That there's a portion of the game where people think they'd reached the ending, but it was only the ending of like book one or part A or whatever. And I can't remember exactly. I think you had to like either S rank all the rest of the missions or replay through everything, but. There was a whole second part of the story of the when main game. When you finish game. the game, it brings up all these extra missions that are just hard versions of missions you've already pr- played. So a lot of people are like, oh, like the game's done. These are just hard versions for the sake of completionists. But no, you replay the missions on hard, beat them all, and then the game continues. And then there's this really cool quiet scene that kind of finishes up her character. And then you, you actually get to the, the, the proper 
quotations proper because we know that there was still heaps more cut off that game, but proper for what was released version of that, that of that game. And they did reach that point with filler, which was hard versions of already done missions. Yeah, yeah. which is ridiculous. But um, and even I was just quickly, you know, trying to be sneaky and do some research in the side. Apparently, in the original Shadow Colossus, there was something called the Cloth of Desperation, where you had to like defeat the game on normal, defeat the game on hard. And then defeat all 14 Colossus again, Colossi again, and then you get some parachute. And that's it. <laughs> why? <laughs> Fucking why? This is like the Zelda car thing. It's bullshit. My favorite, my favorite thing, though, is the end of this point. This is from Games Radar. The end of this uh, section about this. So, though we should point out, U- Ueda-san has reportedly hinted there's still one last big secret that nobody's discovered yet. I fucking hate everything that you just told me. I, so much. I love it. I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> but but I, I, per, I, I largely don't have any issue with those sorts of things because those who are pursuing it have completed the game. You're just doing it for the shits and giggles or just because you're chasing down trophies or just because you want to see every little thing. I mean, JRPGs, for example, like they give you all, all these optional weapons and things you can get and... They contribute nothing. Like you would have, like you would have leveled up high enough to be able to beat that final boss and have no dramas. Regardless, this is just some weapon that, well, probably won't make a difference anyway. Uh, it, it doesn't phase me too much that these sorts of things are minuscule or On minute, point. and it's probably why I don't have as many platinums as I do because I don't go chasing down <laughs> enough stuff. But without going full circle to the beginning of the podcast, I'll throw it to the two of you again. <laughs> the the <laughs> talking about weapon stuff that just just reminded me and I can tie this into the next topic well the only game where and JRPG game where I've spent the effort and time to get every character's legendary weapon for no sake other than because just you can. to get it just because I can although I did do one secret boss with them all and it made it a lot easier was the first Kingdom Hearts game I got everyone's legendary weapons, shields. I think it was just weapons and shields. Their clothing was whatever, I think. But yeah, I got all that for the characters and that, and then I used them all to fight the the final Sephiroth battle, which was actually kind of bullshit hard. But yeah. I was a sick kid and beat that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so talking about Kingdom Hearts, this week, big Kingdom Hearts week. I feel like every week's big Kingdom Hearts week. I, I, I try and purposely dodge most Kingdom Hearts news solely because I brought my PS3 for Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> and, and, and I'm still waiting. Mm. I'm still waiting. I remember buying my King- I remember getting my PS3 going, this is worth it now. Because Th- this is, you know when you talk yourself into buying something where you're like, this, this will be good to buy now because. And it was, this is good to buy now with this combo, with Little Big Planet and whatever the hell else came with it because shortly I will have Kingdom Hearts 3... <laughs> And The Last Guardian. And 150 Platinums. Or whatever yeah. it is you've got. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. But I did watch the trailer that came out for Kingdom Hearts this week because Twitter was kind of going crazy over it. And I'm a fan of Monsters, Inc. And I saw how ridiculous Goofy looked with his Monsters, Inc. version of himself where he just kind of looks like a, a horrible child version of Play-Doh gone to, gone to hell, just <laughs> squished in all sorts of shapes and sides. It's absolutely disturbing. Uh, what did we think of the trailer itself? What do we think of the idea of Kingdom Hearts actually coming out in 2018? Because I don't think that's going to happen at all. And then, what is everyone's Kingdom Hearts history, and are you looking forward to this game at all? Start with Kieran, because I know I know he only kicked off the franchise last year. Well, I know I'd played it previously, I just hadn't finished them. So I finished the first one. There were a couple points. Monsters, Inc. I was hyped. I was okay. Monsters, Inc. look cool. Look cool. I probably will enjoy it more when it's got, like, the voice actors from Monsters, Inc. that I love. Then yeah. I'll be cool, because when it's in Japanese, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I never cool. watched that version of Monsters, Inc. myself. Either. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, like, I remember okay. that yeah. voice. <laughs> that voice. Oh, Mike, Mike Wazowski. Wazowski. <laughs> oh, you're like, God damn it. But I was super hyped for Tangled, because... Mm. and I. Because I like Tangled, it's like it's a really good movie, and and when I saw it, I'm like, okay, the world looks really lush with this green. I'm liking this mm-hmm. green. It doesn't look as terrible and trash as as Tarzan was when I looked at Tarzan being green and bambooy and shit. And PS2. a couple points that excited me. 
couple points that excited me. One, they had the characters from that world without getting rid of Donald or Goofy. That was awesome. They all had their own little health bar. I was like, fuck yeah, this is this is the shit. I don't have to have one being stupidly leveled compared to the other one. Fuck that shit. This is the future of video games. It is. It is the future. And the when world... you work on a game for 50 <laughs> years, you'd think they'd get it right. That's yeah, fine. eventually they get it right. But then there were so many little details like, oh, that's really cool. Oh, that's really cool. Wait, Sora's, Sora's first changed in that Monsters, Inc. level. He's normally grey. He's like orange in this section. What the fuck? And then the monster, like the enemy design looked cool. I'm really, I, I'm so, I'm kind of excited. But at the same time, normal Kieran's like, this is not coming out in 2018. It looked really good. Like, it looked super good. But at the same time, I'm like, it's not. I don't, I'm not going to let myself believe that. It's like, it's like, you know, you look back at a terrible relationship and you're like, I can't, I can't tell myself that this is going to work this time, you know? <laughs> can't do it. I've got to prepare myself to be heartbroken again. I've got to prepare for this. Also, the, the fact, sorry, quickly. Paul, I'm sorry. Go. I'm really sorry. Um, quickly, aerials are summoned, which means one thing. We're not going to fucking Atlantis. No swimming. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. They'll, they'll find a way to drop it in there somehow. Fuck. I think Paul has a different view on this, I believe, following uh, his Twitter. Oh, my opinion is about when it's coming out. Yeah. Uh, so firstly, my, my Kingdom Hearts history, I played the first one on PS2. Uh, I had come down with chicken pox as a kid. I came on a little bit late. I think I was about 13 or 14. But it was enough of an opportunity, time away from school for me to sit down and smash through that thing. Wanted to jump through, jump into the second. Didn't. Um, uh, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's it. That is literally it. And I'm so into everything they do and I have just... Never been. I I know that story gets really convoluted, and I just haven't been able to get the uh, the enthusiasm to kind of go through and get my head around it all. And play. And I know the remixes are all there. I've got all of them: the one point five, two point five, two point eight, two point nine five seven two. Yeah, yeah, like yeah whatever it's called. Um, final chapter, prologue, before HD uh, remix. H, yeah, like vinyl it's, edition. It's ridiculous. Plushies included. Um, plus chocobo. Um, yeah. And but like I'm really keen on everything they're doing with it. Uh, in terms of when the game's coming out, I fully expect them to. Well, they're not going with the big event like they did with Final Fantasy 15, but it will play out exactly the same. Uh, they did announce that they will be making the release date announcement at E3, and when they come to E3, they'll say, "Guess what? The game is coming September." And then I don't know, about a month away from release, they'll go, "Nah, sorry, November. We'll see you then." It's coming out this year, but it's going to get delayed again. That's I my- I would agree if they were doing that the stupid Final Fantasy event thing, which does because I feel like they put on the event, and Kingdom Hearts three is as big as Final Fantasy as far as I'm concerned. Like it, it, I they could pull the numbers for that event. People people doubt the Kingdom Hearts. Uh, the fans out there, I feel like. I do. They're not as great in number, but they are really, like, they frenzy when something Intense. goes on. Like they're, yeah. Yes, exactly. There are many, many, many fan sites, and they have f- message boards that if you go look one up that are just active as all hell constantly. Um, and that's obviously a, a very small majority, but if you pull out the words Kingdom Hearts, a lot of people, like especially my age, I remember everyone in school loved Kingdom Hearts. Everyone had Simple and Clean, the, the song from the first game as their mobile ringtone in my grade at some point. Like, it was just uh, loved by everyone. It was, it's a really weird thing. And I played two. I played the, uh, the, mo- well, no, not the mobile, the, the game, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, GBA, I can't even remember now, Chain of Memories, whatever it was. Oh, it, yeah. was it was one of those. GBA, I think. Yeah. Um, I played that and that is the last one I played. I played those three. And ever since then, I never played the PSP one, the whatever one, the side story, the mobile game, the, the fucking animated 40 minute thing that apparently you've got to watch all these things. So I'm completely lost in the story and I'm completely hyped for Kingdom Hearts 3 as much as I was when I brought my PS3 back in the day thinking I was going to get it. <laughs> the problem is, is that the years between when I brought that PS3 and today, they've released all these other games. 50 of them. I remember look, yeah, I remember looking at going, not necessary, side story. Doesn't don't don't need to know about that. I, I won't play that. 
And then you ask anyone online who's huge Kingdom Hearts fan and has played all this stuff, and they go, you're fucked. Like, you are fucked. <laughs> if you, if you, I saw a tweet today. Someone's like, I feel sorry for everyone who was Kingdom Hearts fans and only played the first two games and watched that trailer because you're just up shit creek. You have no idea what's going on. I'm like, you're not, you're not wrong. I have, it, I have no idea. Is that a storytelling problem, though? And, like, I, I mean, I think you're releasing number three, which, I mean, I'm a math teacher. Numbers go one, two, three. Um, yep. <laughs> there should be a logical flow from story one through to three and no amount of side stories, prequels, pre-sequels, mm-hmm. or anything like that should interfere in that core story. And I think if I'm picking up number three and... Admittedly, I didn't play two, but let's say hypothetically I'd played two as well. I should be able to pick that up and know exactly what's going on and whilst there might be little Easter eggs and little nudges in the side, there shouldn't be anything more than that and interferes in the storytelling. In my mind. I agree. I agree. And the the, th- the example I'd give is that obviously I'm a big Star Wars fan. None of the side spin-off stuff for Star Wars, the comics, the games, the books, all that sort of stuff, they're all there'll be little hints in the main Star Wars films or even in like the main Star Wars TV shows going forward. Guarantee when they actually do a proper live action Star Wars series, it'll have stuff in it that I'll be like, oh, that's from the, like, that's from the book or that, that kind of thing. But it won't be necessary plot information at all. It's just yeah. stuff to get excited about. And that's how I feel like most series should be handled with spin-off stuff. Because when you put out a game that's called Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep... I don't read Kingdom Hearts really important. If you feel like playing number three, you should probably play this fucking PSP game with two characters you've never seen before called Aqua and fucking something else. I can't even remember. Why? That's, it, it is bad. But at the same time, the excuse is, and everyone will give you, oh, it's Japan. Like, I feel like that's the, oh, they're weird. They'll say, they just do whatever oh, want. it's Japan. And then the other thing is, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't really want to play these games. I'll just, I'll just read synopsis. And then, That's my plan. And then I've attempted to, Dylan. Mm. They start throwing names out of nowhere that I'm like, who? What? Xenohart. What does this mean? Who is this person? And the other thing is, I got that Who's feeling goofy? of being lost. Who's Goofy? <laughs> I got that feeling of being lost halfway through that trailer. Yeah. Halfway through that trailer. That guy with like the black, like freaking... Mark, like helmet destiny helmet came in with his like eye sword and like poked his chest and i'm like oh because they had subtitles in there when i watched and he was like you have the other half of me inside your heart and i was like oh so you're talking about roxas and then sora says this other name and i'm like no, no, no. sorry sorry what i hate you know what i need is last year i read alexa ray's uh kingdom hearts book I've heard good things what about I it. What I need, it's good. It's really good read. It's I, I get excited hearing people talk about stuff they love excitedly. And that's what that, that book was. And I got the same kind of excitement at a lot of the PAX panels I've talked about before, where my, one of my favorite panels was the sound design panel because it was something I didn't know fucking sweet all about in game design, sound design. I had these people getting really amped up about details I never knew and I couldn't really understand what they were talking about, but I was still just like, I'm really happy for you right now. This is great. And reading um, Alexa's book about Kingdom Hearts is, I kind of understand and remember this, yes, but at the same time, I'm just really happy that you're happy and you enjoy talking about it. But... If she wants to write another book that can explain everything you need, everything you need to know about Kingdom Hearts before you play Kingdom Hearts three, I feel like that's kind of what I need because just reading the Wikipedia synopsises, they're not written in a way to be made easy for you to digest and actually understand. They're I'd just probably like synopsis. overcomplicated it, but I'd like a two book process: a book with like the the story. And a book just full of characters with their pictures and their names. So every time I read, I can be like, okay, oh, wait, who? And then I have to go to the... I'd, 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 I'd appreciate Who's Goofy that. again? Who, who's Goofy? <laughs> Donald? Simba? What? There's this I mouse that no keeps idea. popping up, but I can't place my finger on what he's called. That's the part that in the trailer where I was really fucking confused. Was I, remember, I got, You get to the end of the trailer, Riku's standing there, Mickey's like... What are you doing? Riku, Riku like puts down his sword and he's like, oh, I'm leaving this for the other half of me. And I was straight away like, 
guys, I remember I finished number two. I, why is Mickey, th like, they're back on the island that they left in the first game? What the... F I don't know. Where, where do I get this information? And if you, I guarantee if you ask any Square Enix uh, PR person, it'll just be like, well, we put out the collection so you can all play the games. And it's like, I don't have fucking 200 hours to spare... To, to get these these games down packed. You should just got it right the, the first time. Yeah, if, if Square Enix is prepared to pay off every video game publisher in existence to give it me a clear month or five, then I'll yeah. get through them before Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. But at the moment, I've got no, yeah. I've got, I haven't got a hope. And a bit like you, like I'm kind of feeding off the enthusiasm from Kingdom Hearts fans. Like when I met my now wife, we, there was a lot of games that we didn't necessarily have in common and those sorts of things, but Kingdom Hearts was something that she was really enthusiastic about and had spoken about how she loves and the, that that same music and you know a lot of the things yep. we've already spoken about to this point. Um, and whilst I missed Kingdom Hearts 2, um, her hype was very real for Kingdom Hearts 3 and she's still really keen on it. Um, like that's something that's going to be great for the both of us, but I won't have a clue what's going on at this point. And that, <laughs> when I was like that upsets 15. me a little bit. When I was like 15, I remember being like, I was so in love with Kingdom Hearts, the whole franchise. I remember being like, if I ever have a kid, I'm naming it Sora. <laughs> <laughs> There's some trivia for you. Good good uh, things time, Good thing time has passed and you made better yeah, decisions. Yeah. <laughs> good thing I didn't have a kid at 15. Eh? Like, you know, <laughs> sometimes we make bad decisions, sometimes we make good ones. And... You know, calling your kid heir. I think it, I think Sora means heir or something. You know, along those lines. Uh, probably not the best idea, but simple and clean is is a great song still, and I'm excited for Kingdom Hearts three in some form or fashion. At least this is my last wish. To, 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 at the start of that fucking game, I I don't care if it's twenty minutes, twenty minute. Put a video. Movie. Put a massive movie. Yes. Yeah. Put a massive movie that five seconds in, if you don't want to watch, just like skip to the start of the game. But if they, if you make a 20 minute animated movie, kind of like how Kingdom Hearts 2 opens, but it's only like five minutes explaining the events of Chains of Memories, because as we didn't even point this out, they fuck you right from the get-go. Between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, they have that Chains, Chain of Memories game, which was necessary for the plot of Kingdom yeah. Hearts 2. They've been fucking and, everyone yeah, since it's... day one. And I, I didn't care. even realise that when I was a kid. I remember playing Kingdom Hearts 2 when I was a kid and the Roxas section feeling like it took forever. And I'm like, who, who is all, what's going on? Who's all these people? Okay. They don't, they, they really don't. I don't. They really give zero fucks. All right, wrapping up on that. I have a few questions for you, Kieran, from Michael C, who wrote in Fuck. regarding last week's uh, oh, events on the podcast. <laughs> Now, I feel like he wrote these in a stress moment after <laughs> listening to the fi first five minutes of the show. But you, let's see what comes out of your fucking mouth to the following. Okay. That's good. <laughs> Having listened to last week's episode, I've got a feeling I know where the line of questioning is going, but we'll, we'll see. Number one, where did Kieran get the method of eliminating Dylan? You see, we were sharing a hotel room at the time. And I felt bad for the cleaners, you see. I was like, I could smash his head off the TV, which he did himself. I could smash his head off the TV. No, I might break the TV or there might be a lot of blood. Um, I could make the shower extra slippery and he could slip and fall. And No, that'll, that'll smash the glass. The pillow. Pillow's easy. They can just chuck that away. Or I could have popped it in my suitcase, you know, like... It was fine. It was the easiest method to kill him. Number two. What will this podcast do, losing its most charismatic host? Well, it didn't. I'm still here. And it's you, okay. And you brought me on. You brought me on. You're fine. And, I, and we brought Paul. And that was my <laughs> plan all along, to bring on Paul and to spend the next couple of months actually to, you know, test out a couple of people. Because Ashley, Ashley was more of a scapegoat to be like, you know, a patsy. Um, in a couple Hold of months. Ashley. Also, he thinks Kingdom Hearts going to come out in episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> was Cruzy Mate complicit in aiding Kieran's escape from New South Wales, as well as Ashley Hobley in getting the new co-host job? You see, Ashley Hobley was very helpful. Um, almost too helpful. And that aided my 
dastardly plans quite quite a lot, you know. In a couple, the original plan was in a couple of months for after Dylan's, you know, been not found um, for the pillowcase and unt- weapon to be found demise. in Ashley's home. Untimely demise. Thank you. <laughs> this get get this gentleman back on the show. More fantastic yeah, choice nice. of words. Um, you, you need traditional like, media. Is, Exactly. Traditional. Me- we're, we're literally two bumbling idiots. This whole show comes in with fucking full-fledged sentences <laughs> with actual words. <laughs> Dylan, I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling threatened. He knows how to yeah, speak no, properly. Right. Fucking, I don't know. Uh, he's making um, us feel dumb. I don't like it either. <laughs> Fuck him. Let's kill him. Just, I didn't just want to... Just cut um, my audio. I didn't want <laughs> yeah. to incriminate Jack because Jack has a loving family and I couldn't do that to him. Um, to be honest, it's quite easy to get out of that state. Um, you just you just be honest with them, and you say, "Look, I've uh, done you a done you a great deal. I've got rid of a Tasmanian from your borders. Um, <laughs> d- I've done you a favor." And they're just, oh, "Mate, go right through. Don't even scan your bag, and that's fine. You know, that's what you do. That's the that's the way with of the every world. bit of bullshit that just came out of your mouth. Number four, is this an elaborate scheme for ratings slash followers on the Explosion Network?" <laughs> I think he's asking if it's a bit, Karen. <laughs> D- Dylan, when have me and you ever done a bit? Never. That stupid question. Don't ask silly questions. I think, the, si- the, Number si- five. think the simple thing is, is it working? Because if it is, then the answer is yes. Right? Wait, I, I feel like the answer is, we don't know and we don't <laughs> care because we we'll just do it anyway. <laughs> Number five. How will the Every Trophy Count segment work without Dylan? Um, because every gamer score counts now from now on. And those numbers do count. They make a bigger number. And I don't think I've ever heard something more offensive said on this show than what just came out of your mouth that last sentence. Gamer score doesn't mean shit. It's just fucking numbers. Once it's you a reach a certain number. point, you can't read it within a, like a second of looking at your screen. Exactly. It's That's impressive. That's overcompensation at its greatest. I fucking hate you. This I love you too. Bullshit. I've missed I'm skipping you, hashtag every trophy counts because we're gone quite a while. <laughs> uh, let's wrap up the show. Thank you. Uh, for joining us, everyone, don't forget you can follow this show on Twitter at Platt Podcast. You should go over to iTunes and give it a five to one score review. Whatever you feel like this particular episode was worth. Five. I myself, 3.7. Five. You need to give it a five. No, let's not oversell it, Kieran. This is like Uber scores. It's either a one or a five. There's no in between. You've got to go true. with words. I did words. say that about... Exactly. You know, how good speaking stuff has this podcast been full of? Can you give this episode five stars because a traditional media list, media list was on here? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it right now. In I'm progress. four drinks in and I feel like it's showing finally. <laughs> I feel like it's been showing since the start of the fucking Well, show. apparently we drink all the time on this podcast. I don't know. There was that one time where... No, I'm not going to say that in the podcast. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that off air. There was. Don't forget to give it, yeah, give it a review on iTunes. Uh, don't forget this is an Explosion Network show. So you should head to explosionnetwork.com to check out all the other programs we have there. Many podcasts. There's a, a thing up about RTX at the moment. You should go watch all our RTX vlogs. There's four of them because we was there for a whole four days. That's something new we tried out. Mega vlogs. Give that a look. It's not really about games. It's about us as people. And we're, we're real people with hearts and feelings, and that's great. You can follow Explosion Network on Twitter at Explosion Pod. You can follow, <laughs> you can follow uh, me on Twitter at Viva V I V A L A D I L. Kieran, where can people follow you? Um, people can find me at V I V A D I L. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, where can people follow you? Uh, Paul James P2, and I just God gave this podcast a five star rating on iTunes. Yeah, use what'd big you write? Words. Did you write that episode? Uh, nothing. Paul James I just, I just put the, I just put the stars in there, but maybe I'll do just yeah. that. I think you should fill it in and say that episode with Paul James was fucking amazing. Yeah, and yeah. don't come, be don't be modest. And it'll be from the past before the episode even aired, and that's amazing. Exactly. That's, that's how impressive. good it was, though. That's how that you know. Was, that was impressive. <laughs> just, and you can head to. Just have a feeling. Dot net dot au for all things that this kind gentleman with many sentences that actually form structures has come on today to fill and you. If you think that you can write better sentences that form more structural you can get <laughs> fucked, but then use that use those abilities 
on our reviews five stars and challenge him. Good job, Karen. Thank you. You're welcome. Quite plan, everybody. Have a great evening, night, morning. Fucking Eat hell. This February, check out our YouTube and social channels for video content from RTX Sydney, where everything began for the Explosion Network crew last year. On March 3rd, we'll be running a celebratory Twitch stream to mark year two of the network. It'll take place 10 a.m. Sunday morning to midnight and feature the usual shenanigans, but also some exciting announcements about new content coming from the crew in 2018. So make sure you keep that Saturday free. Of course, our weekly shows continue with Pleasure Explosion on Mondays, Platinum Explosion Tuesdays, and Grand Send Gurus Thursdays, each at 12pm. Catch our live streams at twitch.tv slash Explosion Network, and keep your targets locked on explosionnetwork.com for all our explosive content. Happy birthday, Explosion Network. But more importantly, we, happy birthday, Or how do, we, how do we make sentences? Do you teach uh, people out of school? Uh, No. Oh, I, we're fucked. But I, but I can for, I don't know, a dollar a minute. A dollar a minute? There How we much go. does this show make, Dylan? Not we make enough. enough. Not enough. We make enough. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Reviewed. <laughs> Done. I hope you, I hope you wrote it. I hope, I'm going to look there later. Better say Paul J. <laughs> for some of the best. Uh, I can't find it yet. I assume it takes a little while for it loads or something. Just... Just says, got a feeling that episode with Paul James is going to be a hit.